welcome to the channel of soft light today i'm going to talk about the long end of lycon z 24 to 120 millimeter f4 s lens and here are some images test images of mine and this particular one is shot at 120 in the dx mode this was done on uh on z7 uh the first version or second version so in a crop mode so that kind of give us 180 millimeter uh, effective focal length and this was shot at f8 so effectively the depth of field uh, is about f11 on the crop mode sensor uh, in the crop mode on the sensor okay so depth of field is f11 amplified and the field of view is kind of like 180 millimeter out of 120 on the full frame but this is not a crop sensor the next one on um, it's 120 millimeter in FX mode. It's the so-called full frame mode. That is 120 millimeter. And uh, F shutter, shutter is uh, F5.6. So you can see it works out very fine um, on Z7. And the, the, uh, the last image I want to show you, and this one is a 120 millimeter uh, on Z, Nikon Z7. Uh, in the full frame mode. So uh, the shutter for this is 5.6 and the focal point is on the horse and uh, you can see uh, it's it rendered very beautifully. All right. So I want to talk about the lens in its the uh, optical performance from the chart shooting. So, so far, uh, I have talked about the short end, which is 24 millimeter yesterday. Today, I want to talk about the long end. See what kind of things we get for long end. From left, we're going to be at F4. Then, to the right, F5, 6. Next one, F8 and F11. Since I'm using Nikon NX Studio, it only allows me uh, to go up to 40 images at a time. So, I have to go back and forth between F16 and F22 later. All right, so we want to room in the center, no problem, it's very sharp. We want to go to corner areas as we did for the uh, short end. So I want to concentrate on the block of text here. Uh, again, this is not a shot at the minimum focus distance, rather um, slightly longer than the minimum focusing distance. So you can tell the sharpness, this is a sharp sharpness test, and you can tell the sharpness on um, F4, compare that with F5, 6 for the quarter, extreme quarter, F8 and F11. I would say out of the four, F11 looks the best. But forget about F4. Um, let's just compare F6 and F8. F8 can definitely work um, for quarter as well. You know, if you're not caring about the quarter, either F4 or F5, 6 should work. You know, uh, it's, it's sharp, uh, it's very sharp enough for 5.6 to work. As, as I showed you the image of the birds, it was shot, uh, I think it was shot uh, F6.3 and for the horse at 5.6 because I wasn't interested in the corner. I only interested in the horse, so I don't really care. I mean, if you want the edge to edge sharpness, probably you want to shoot F11 or at the minimum F8. So let's compare F. 11 to f16 i'm gonna shoot choose f16 f16 compare that with f11 which one is sharper almost the same there's a slight sharpness to f16 but f11 can work out so remember yesterday i said for the short end 24 you probably uh if you want to edge to edge sharpness you probably want to stop down to f11 ideally for f16 for this long end 120 millimeter I think F8 is good enough, but you want to edge to edge sharpness, F8 is good. F11 is slightly better, but F16 is kind of like overkill. All right, let's compare F16 to F22. F22, you stop all the way down diffraction set scene. I wouldn't think uh, F22 is as sharp as 16. Again, my recommendation is let's go back to... Uh, Let's go back to F4. For F4, we look at the corners here. I didn't correct any vignetting uh, at all in the Lycon and the studio. So this is default setting from the camera. You see the vignette. Here is the docker. 
then f8. By f8, the vignette is pretty much gone. F11 or F16, both of them don't improve much. So I think the sweet spot is F8 and F11 for this lens. Okay, and you can you it's it's a lens that you're supposed to use between F8 and F11 anyway, with design designers go in mind. Okay. So it really depends on what you want to shoot. Uh, I mean, corner to corner sharpness is not very important sometimes. Depends on the composition and the focal point and everything else. But if you definitely want edge to edge sharpness for long end, f8 is minimal, under uh, 20 millimeter end. f8 is, is minimal and f11 is optimal, but you can get away with f, f8. All right, so let's jump back to my uh, images again. This is the 5.6. As you can see, the corner, of course, is out of focus because the focus is on the horse, right? So everything else is slightly blurred in. I don't need sharp edge-to-edge -edge sharpness here at all. All right, the next one, 5.6 is good enough. I mean, 6.3 is, is good enough. I can zoom all the way in, see a little further on the birds, but that's not the point. The point is to show this group of birds fly in tandem. So I don't need edge-to-edge -edge sharpness. Well, the first one is in the crop mode. So effective depth of field is amplified by the crop, which is F11 effectively. But I don't need to show the sharpness on the corner here. If I do, I probably had to rely on a focus stacking to get everything in, in, in sharpness. This this was handheld, didn't bring a tripod. So focus stacking probably won't work for me in this situation. And the entire composition, the light areas here and here and the, the little dirt road. So that draws attention all the way there, not on the sides. I don't need the edge to edge sharpness, you know. So perfect, you know, the lens is perfect for travel use. And if you, I, I don't even want to compare the uh, distortion here because I think it's meaningless. Since I'm not in the uh, architectural photography or not shooting buildings for sale, for advertising or for developers, I'm not interested in that at all. So anything goes here. You know, our eyes, our brains can automatically correct any distortions in the image, even without notice. I'll see you next time. Next time I want to talk about a comparison between uh, this Z24 to 120 to Z24 to 70 on the short end, 24 end. All right, thanks again. See you next time.